Hey there, welcome to the lesson on gesso. If you don't know what gesso is, it is what you generally apply on a canvas before you paint. It primes the canvas so that your paint will get absorbed better. I enjoy using gesso on larger paper drawings and especially in my sketchbook. Most gessos are the same. Some come in buckets and tubes, but I prefer this bottle because I can easily place it on my drawings and just cap it right back up when I'm done. Gesso is very forgiving. With drawing, there are a few different ways we can use gesso, which I'm going to share with you. Often, when you draw in your sketchbook, you'll end up with pages you aren't entirely happy with. This is where gesso comes in. You can use gesso to save some of your drawings. In other words, you can use gesso as a way to erase parts of your drawings while simultaneously creating an interesting surface to redraw over. For example, in this B drawing, I'm not too happy with certain areas, so I'm going to use gesso to erase certain parts. I'm also going to try to create a more textured background while I do this. You can use a watered down brush to apply the gesso to create a more transparent layer if you want your old drawings to peek through. You can also use a palette knife to apply the gesso to get a more interesting texture. Then once the gesso dries, you can give it a light sanding with a really fine grit sandpaper. This makes the texture smooth for drawing over again. What I really like to do is add watercolor washes to the gesso before I draw over it again. This creates an even more interesting mixed media look to your drawings. In this B drawing, I'm going to apply gesso straight over it. I like the B drawing, but I also want to get a more textured look out of it. So I'm going to just apply a quick layer of gesso over it. Trying to also smear graphite into the gesso as well. I'm not done with this drawing, but I'll leave it in my sketchbook so later on I can add more to it. Maybe I want to add more color or totally different drawings next to it. The same goes for putting gesso on old drawings. The parts that bleed through the gesso will only make your drawings more interesting by giving them a mixed media look. Then once the gesso dries, I'm going to draw over it again with a simple contour line to bring out the bee. One of the easiest ways to create a more interesting sketchbook is to go through and apply gesso to some of the pages before you even begin to draw. The biggest hurdle for filling sketchbooks is the dullness of drawing on yet another blank page. By going through a brand new sketchbook and using watercolor and gesso to develop textures, it will make it so much more interesting for you to draw. You'll find yourself getting inspired from the abstract shapes and textures you create. Applying watercolor is also a simple way to create interest in the backgrounds. Here's a tip. Sometimes when you use this gesso technique, the paper will dry a little curled or warped. You can easily fix this by spritzing your paper with some water 
closing the sketchbook and putting some weight on it while it dries. It'll dry flat and it'll be ready to draw on in no time. Once the gesso dries, you can use a fine grit sandpaper to make the gesso paper smooth to draw on. So we talked about a few ways you can use gesso. First to erase and save parts of drawings, like we did in the large B drawing. Second, to completely recycle entire pages, but letting the past drawings bleed through, embracing the textures and colors that come through the gesso, or even improve upon old drawings. And lastly, to make blank pages in your sketchbook even more inspiring to draw on. Really, there aren't any rules using gesso in your sketchbook, and I hope you have fun with this technique.